I'm sorry. Uh, library building. Much pleasure in asking the minister if he'll be good enough to carry out this function. Thank you very much. Up to you, you know. <laughs> uh, Mr. Parsons, uh, Dr. Longworth, uh, Mr. Uh, Hoffer, uh, Ms. Swinburne, members of the Swinburne family, uh, members of the state parliament, and ladies and gentlemen. I was very happy indeed uh, to be here on this occasion and I'm delighted for the invitation to open uh, this fine new library. I'm especially pleased to be here uh, for this particular occasion because I think it was when I was uh, Minister for Education for the Commonwealth on an earlier occasion that the state and the Commonwealth combined made the decisions which have led uh, to the construction of this library. But my concern uh, with Colleges of Advanced Education uh, goes back also to that earlier period. And uh, it was in that time that the Sweeney Committee of Inquiry uh, was established to provide a proper salary basis for people in uh, colleges of advanced education. And the Wiltshire Committee was also established, which has led to the Australian Council of Awards uh, in Advanced Education. And this council has now uh, is now operating, it's had two or three meetings, and I understand that good progress has been made in the initial discussions. The talents and inclinations of many students are more directed to the colleges than to the types of course and to the opportunities available in universities. And secondly, it was also clear that universities alone uh, were not going to meet the entire needs of an expanding and vital Australian industry and commerce. And a Commonwealth-State partnership was necessary in this area because in the perhaps first major venture of the Commonwealth into the education field under Sir Robert Menzies back in the middle 50s, this led to substantial funds and support for universities. And I think that uh, uh, up to the uh, early middle part of the 1960s, large funds were going to universities under the joint programs, but uh, in this time, the colleges were to extent languishing. They were financed uh, entirely by the states uh, without additional support. But with the joint programs, we have, uh, uh, and with what I've said, we have the basic reasons for the support of the colleges of advanced education. Their purpose broadly is to widen the types of courses that are available to students and to widen the opportunities for students at the tertiary level. And the colleges of advanced education certainly do this. A much greater provision of opportunity at the tertiary level is beginning to lead to uh, problems which other countries have felt, uh, certainly so far, much more acutely than Australia. And that concerns the important question of the future employment of graduates and diplomats. At the present moment, I think we only see the very beginnings of this problem to the extent that it is a problem in Australia. And it's confined to fairly narrow areas. For example, the women's arts graduates and doctorates of philosophy. Of course, the immediate problem can be overemphasized, and I think sometimes is. In many fields, perhaps most. There's a reasonable balance of supply and demand of people trained in our tertiary institutions. But we must ensure uh, that the apparent imbalance in some areas is corrected uh, to the extent that we're capable of doing so. The report of the chairman of the Australian Vice Chancellor's Committee for the period 1967 to 1970 points to the present special areas of concern. As I mentioned earlier, women's arts graduates and doctorates of philosophy, graduates with training in a highly specialized field. Solutions of sorts for the former problem are, I think, appearing. And for instance, I've noted that in the Canberra College of Advanced Education, there are quite a significant number of first degree students from the National University 
who, after their general degree course, are enrolling in the College of Advanced Education in courses of librarianship, teaching, secretarial studies, and I think that this move is likely to broaden into other areas. But this may not be the only kind of solution to this problem. The Secret of Philosophy is a somewhat different one, because as the Vice Chancellor's Committee pointed out, uh, pointed out in his report, the employment problems of doctorate graduates arise partly from the highly specialized nature of their work, of their training, while the universities themselves can absorb only a very limited percentage of them. A few um, years ago in Australia, nearly all the doctorate, uh, successful doctorate graduates were probably re-employed in universities as teachers or as research people. But this is no longer the case because of the much greater production of doctorates. But unlike the chairman of the vice chancellor's committee, I believe uh, we must try and do more to solve the potential problems. We can't leave it to the student alone to solve through assessment of his employment prospects on graduation. As you well know, training in a particular area doesn't create a right to a particular job. There must be close two-way liaison between employers and colleges and universities to enable students to be given the best possible guidance. In other words, if students are not assisted in channeling the supply of skills they provide broadly towards the demands of a community, then we face an imbalance and a waste of human resources at a most important level. I discussed the matter with the chairman of the university's commission, Professor Carmel, commission for the next triennium, the fifth report is out of the way, he'll be devoting attention to it in consultation with universities, Department of Labor and National Service. I think I should stress that in pointing to the specialized nature of the training of doctorates, and I've devoted some few moments to this problem, I don't cast myself as a critic of universities for producing such people. Employers of doctorates of philosophy themselves, I think, need to realize that today a, a doctorate is vocational only for a very limited few. Employment of a doctor of philosophy ought to be regarded as employment of a trained mind to give greater depth to vocational skills probably acquired on the job. As in the States, the Commonwealth provides about 38 million in grants to the States for capital purposes, 23% more than last year. But I know again that those who are especially concerned with the colleges would much prefer that the increase were even greater. With many of such proportions, it's rewarding for me to see this library as the latest evidence of the cooperation and faith of the state and the Commonwealth governments in the whole concept of the colleges of advanced education. I'd like to say one word in particular about libraries, which I often regard uh, as the most important part of any institute of learning, higher education, possibly the most important part of a secondary school. The science program that the Commonwealth has for secondary schools assists scientists or would-be scientists. But a modern library in a secondary school or a modern library well-equipped in a college of advanced education will be of enormous advantage, indeed uh, will fill a quite essential purpose for all those who are passing through the particular institution.